first thing that we're going to do is find an image to use in GIMP that is public domain. Public domain means that anybody can use this image without getting sued. Whoever created it provides it to the public for us to use. And you can find those types of images so that you're not plagiarizing or breaking any copyright laws at a really nice website called creativecommons.org. And what creativecommons.org does is it kind of filters through the things that you would normally find in Google and it searches out the ones that are public domain that you can use. So to do that, you'll go search the comments. And the first thing you do is type in what you're looking for. So I'm going to be looking for a guinea pig and flower picture. And if you were looking for other things like media or music or video, once you put the uh, topic in there that you're searching for, you could be selective and just click music or just click video. I'm looking for images, so I've got images selected here and I'm going to click and it will search Google Images for anything that's public domain with a guinea pig and flower. And you can see lots of really cute stuff popping up. I'm looking for an image that has a lot of contrast today. And what I mean by that is there's a stark difference between the colors that are next to each other. For example, this yellow against the green, that creates great contrast. So this dark green color that I we have here, the guinea pig, is black and white. So this is gonna be the challenging part of our design for today. We're gonna to go ahead and click on the guinea pig and you'll say, right click, copy, ding. So you could go to Creative Commons and find this exact same image like I did. I might've even put this link in your email if I sent it in an email. So once you have copied your little guinea pig and he's in your clipboard, you're going to open up your GIMP and I just open it this way. And once you have GIMP opened, you'll go edit, paste. And there's your little guy, so cute. Now, if your GIMP isn't looking like mine, it, if it's a little bit scattered, you might need to go into Windows and make sure that it's set to single window mode. If you don't have the tool dock over here on the left, no worries. Go up to this Windows menu and there's your toolbox. Click there. If you don't have the tool options, then go into your window still and under dockable dialogues, you'll notice this is where you can find all of the different types of docks. You'd click tool options to get your tool options back. And then the other thing that you want are your layers. Notice over here, I have layers going to go ahead and click on layers if you're not seeing that. All right, and that will bring up your layers. Perfect. Hopefully it looks like this. And sometimes what happens is when you first open it, it these, um, these tools are kind of squished over to the side. Just find that little spot there where you get your double arrow and drag it and widen it a little bit. You can widen your layers, so you can do all of that. The other thing I want us to do right away, I'm gonna size this to my window, is I want us to save our file right away. I can't tell you how many times I've had students say, I forgot to save it, and then my computer crashed. Okay, let's not have that be you. File, save as. I like to make my image design folder in my pictures. So in my pictures, I will create an image design folder and you can do that just by clicking create folder. 
I already have mine created. So I'm going to click here and I have an intervention folder that I've already created in there. You want to name this always with your first and last name. Now this .xcf at the end is the file extension and that's important that you don't accidentally erase that. If you don't have the .xcf at the end, guess what? You're never going to be able to open this back up again and I won't be able to open it and all of your work will be gone. So make sure your .xcf is there and just put your first and last name. Your first and last name is not Rachel Giroux, so please don't put my name. Put your first and last name and then you can say Project 1. Rachel Giroux, Project 1. Or your first and last name, Project 1. And then you're going to click at the bottom here where it says Save. You'll notice then at the top left of your screen that it has your file name at the top. And now anytime throughout this process you can remember, and you want to remember often, you're just going to hit save. Or if you want to use the shortcut, control S to save it. Save as often as you can for two reasons. One, then you won't ever lose that work that you did. And two, it frees up your computer's workable memory every time you save and it'll make it function better. So if you ever notice that your GIMP is not responding the way that it's supposed to, hit save. That might fix it. All right, so you've got this cute little guinea pig and let's make sure we're seeing all of that picture. So go to view, zoom, and fit the image in the window. There, now I can see all of it. Next, we're going to name this original layer. So just double click on the layer and type original and hit enter. All right, and then we're gonna lock it. Well, let's not lock it yet, hold on. <laughs> right click on that layer and you're gonna get this box here. Duplicate this layer, okay? Duplicate, here's the original copy. So let's rename this duplicate layer, my work, and hit enter. And then you can lock the original. So when you lock your original, you basically make it so you can't make any changes to it. Whenever you're working in a digital program, you always wanna save your original lock it, and then hide it. Now I know you can't tell that we hit it because there's actually a duplicate layer on top, but if you hide that layer, you'll notice that now you don't have anything. You can show it. Notice if I have my move tool, if you hover over the tools, it will tell you what they are. This is the move tool, and this allows you to move things. So click on your move tool whenever you wanna move something. And you'll notice, oh, it moved anyway. Well, generally you shouldn't be able to make any changes, right? <laughs> it's locked. So if whatever, for whatever reason, if you end up making some changes to something and you didn't want that to happen, hold down control and hit Z and it'll undo your last move. In fact, you can go back and undo several last moves. So if you ever find yourself making a mistake, just hit Control Z. You can edit undo, and you can also redo. So let's say you decide, no, I did like that, I want it back. You can redo it, and that's Control Y. Okay, so that's a really important function to remember. All right, so we are in the My Work layer. We're hiding the original, and we're gonna make sure that we can see our work layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to use some of our selection tools today. I'm going to hit File, Save. Why don't you do that with me if you've done anything? And you are going to see these different tools. You've got a rectangular select tool. That means I, whoops, I still have my move tool selected, sorry. There, now I have a rectangular select tool. 
I could select this portion of my image and I could go up and I have to click save a lot when I'm making a video to free my RAM because it doesn't like to do anything. And I could colorize just that rectangular selection. Pretty fun, huh? I could go up and I still have a selection. I still have marching ants. I could go up and select anything to do with selections is under the select menu. I could invert my selection and my marching ants are going around the outside. And that indicates that this is the area is being selected now and I could colorize that. Color, colorize. Let me do that one different though. I want to do that one a different hue. Also pretty. There's the red. And so hue is another word for color. So you can change the hue and you can increase the saturation, which makes it richer. Oh, how sweet. You can increase the lightness, which makes it lighter. Or the darkness, which would augment it, bring it to black for a second there. Okay, and you can click OK. All right, and then I can go File save if I want to save that <clears throat> but you know what I'm I'm only showing you a demonstration well let's just go ahead yeah let's do file save and let's just go ahead and save what I've done so far and when you want to get rid of your marching ants you'll just go select none and they're gone now that I don't have anything selected I'm gonna go up to colors brightness and contrast. I'm going to play around with my contrast. Notice what happens when I increase contrast. Oh, the blacks get blacker, the whites get whiter. Nice. And you can play around and adjust the lightness and the contrast and see the way those two things play together. And then get whatever you like the best and click OK and save it. All right, so that was using the rectangular select tool. Perfect. All right, we're going to go ahead and lock that layer and we're going to hide it. And we're going to, um, let's, I'm not sure if I can make a duplicate while it's locked. I'm going to try this out. Got my original layer. I'm going to click on my original layer, then right click on it. And I'm going to try to duplicate this layer again. Awesome, it let me do it, perfect. So I didn't have to unlock that, but I do need to unlock the, uh, the original copy that I'm gonna work in here. So I can go ahead and hide that one again. I'm gonna call this one, let's see. That was the rectangular tool. Let's use the, what's this one called? The ellipse select. So let's call this ellipse select. We're just playing around with selection tools. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this one rectangular select. There we go. And notice I can bring it back anytime. Oop, there he is, Oop, there he is. Pretty fun, huh? <clears throat> so make sure that you have rectangular select locked. And in fact, click on that layer and use this down arrow and move it underneath, okay? And we're gonna be working in this top layer now. Okay, make sure that you have it selected because that tells GIMP that's the layer I want my work to happen in, okay? All right, so next grab this, click save if you like me, you need to, um, ellipse select tool, and what do you think it's gonna do? It's gonna draw an ellipse, right? Cool, so do I wanna draw my ellipse around the flower? Sure, why not? And you can adjust the size of it. You can certainly do that. And maybe I'm going to click save to free up my RAM. I'm going to colorize. I'm gonna to go to color balance. Here's a different option. Color balance. So I can change uh, these cyan and red, magenta and green and yellow and blue. These complementary colors are colors that are kind of opposite of each other on the color wheel. And I can get some interesting effects here. Those were my midtones I had. So let's click on shadows and see what that does. Let's 
going to affect things a little bit differently. Oh, that one finally got into my flower. I kind of like that the flower stayed the same. So I'm going to click. Oh, you could do your highlights too. But I've got to click save because my RAM is going crazy. Whoops. There we go. Sometimes your RAM's going to go nuts and you're not going to be able to do everything you want. But that's okay. All right, I'm going to leave it like that and click OK. And now let's go ahead and do select none. And let's grab a hold of that ellipse again. And let's draw another ellipse. And this time, let's uh, have them kind of double over each other a little bit there. Let's get some crossover and just play around with it and see what happens when we do that. <clears throat> Could be fun. All right, and then let's go to colors. We can do hue and saturation this time. Let's try one of these different color tools that we have. This uh, little circle up here is saying that if I click on red, it's only going to adjust the reds, but I really don't have any reds in here. That's not going to work, but I do have some green, don't I? So I'm going to click on the green one and that is going to help to allow me to adjust the hue of the green area. It's a little wonky. I'm also going to try the cyan. Might not have enough RAM to do it though, but you could go ahead and continue with it. It also is letting me play with the saturation. I'm going to cancel that since I've run out of RAM. And I'm going to try again. <laughs> and this time I'm not going to select anything. And I'm going to play with the hue. And I want you to notice what's happening to the guinea pig. Nothing. Why? Because the guinea pig is black and white. It doesn't have any hue. It's completely desaturated. When something is desaturated, I'm just going to bring this back to zero. You can type in a zero there. When something, if something is desaturated, that means all the colors been removed. So you can grab this saturation bar, any of the tools that have saturation on them, and you can increase the saturation, right? And that brightens it. Or if you decrease the saturation, everything becomes black and white. Did the guinea pig change? <laughs> Not much. He was already black and white, right? But you can change the rest of that to be black and white by desaturating it. That's kind of fun, isn't it? Um, but you probably don't want to do that. Let's just leave that. And um, just change the, the hue. And notice that fun crossover effect that you're getting. Oh, ooh, that's pretty. I like that one. I'm gonna kick. I'm gonna go with that. You you go with what you want. Then click OK. Make sure you save. Okay. And then let's go ahead and select none. Should we leave it like that? Looks really cool. I love it. I'm going to show you how to do another fun thing. I want to get this green back here. I want to change that to something else. So I'm going to show you this really fun tool. It's called the Fuzzy Select Tool. You're going to click on that Fuzzy Select Tool. And over in your tool options, you'll have a threshold setting, 15. Now, this threshold is basically going to tell you how much of a certain color or within a range of that certain color that you click on to select. So this is going to be based on hue. So if you zoomed in, this is a, I can't do that when I'm making a video, it would crash my computer. But if I zoomed way in, you'd be able to see all of the individual little pixels and each one of those pixels is a different color. And so essentially, wherever I click, it's picking that color. And it's saying, Anything in this area that's within that color range, I'm going to select that. So it selected all of this. My threshold's 15. I thought that selected a lot for 15. Now I want to select more of it. 
So how I do that is I hold down my shift key because shift means add more. So I'm gonna click down here now with my shift key down and notice it added some more and I'm gonna click over here and hit shift. Oops, it didn't get that spot up there. I'm still holding shift. I'm gonna click in there. I'm still holding shift. Oh, I'm still holding shift and I'm just gonna keep going around until it eventually has everything selected that I want. Now, if you hit something in this green area and it started selecting stuff out here, that means your threshold was too high and you need to decrease it. 15 worked pretty well for me, but you'll notice in this area right here, there was a little bit of crossover because these hues are very similar. So what I'm gonna do to fix that is I'm going to File, Save, <clears throat> and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so I can see that area better. Here is my zoom tool. I click on that and just go like this a couple of times. And now look at, you can see there's subtle difference. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna hit Save, free up my RAM, and I'm gonna go back to my fuzzy select tool, okay? And I'm going to decrease my threshold a little bit. So I'm taking it down to 6.9, I'm gonna take it down to five, somewhere around five. And this time I wanna get rid of this part. I'm subtracting this, I'm not adding anymore. I'm subtracting, because all I want is this green. I don't want this stuff in here too, I wanna to get rid of it. So to subtract a selection, you hold down the control key. So hold down control, make sure you've got fuzzy select, and click, and notice, that it is getting rid of, and I have to click on all these little areas, and you know why? It's because I decreased my threshold so much. Boy. Okay, there's a much easier way for me to get the rest of this. Let me show you. There's another tool I wanna share with you. File, save, and that is the free select tool. This is where you can just draw around the area that you wanna select, so click there. Hold down control and just draw a circle, and you have to end where you get the little yellow dot, and it's gone. It's gone because I was holding down control. Now, I just want you to know if you did anything silly and you accidentally made a mistake, what do you hit? Control Z. You can always go back, Control Z, as many steps as you need, and if you go back too many steps and you wanna redo it, Control Y, or just go up to your edit menu where the undo and redo are, okay? All right, perfect. So I'm not gonna click on my picture because I've got this tool selected, and that's gonna mess up if I do. But if I did and I accidentally did something, you can hit Escape or Control Z. All right, so I am going to hit Save to free up my RAM, and I'm going to zoom back out. So I'm going to click on the Zoom tool and you'll notice that it's automatically set to zoom in. You can zoom out too if you hold down the control key. I'm gonna click save and see if I can get that to show up. Notice there's a plus next to my magnifying glass. If I hold down control, at least if it were on your computer, it, I, it won't show on my video, but you're gonna see a minus, and that means that it's gonna zoom you back out. There's my minus, now it showed up. Perfect, now I can see the whole thing. Awesome. Now the next thing I wanna do is I'm going to change this to black and white from green. So let's go to colors and let's do hue and saturation. Remember I told you saturation, if you take the saturation out of it, it becomes black and white. Boom, so there I'm going with it, and I'm gonna click OK. And then I'm going to select none. I wanna get rid of the selection. And the final thing I wanna do is adjust the brightness and contrast of the entire picture, just like we did in our last layer at the end, how we adjusted the contrast. You always want to adjust contrast. So go to your brightness and contrast, and you're going to increase 
bump up that contrast. And look how pretty that looks. You might want to make it darker or lighter. If you increase your lightness, you might want to increase your contrast some more. Oh, that looks wonderful. Beautiful contrast. The difference between those pure blacks and pure whites is just breathtaking. Click OK and save. Woohoo! This is really cool. So you've got that layer. I'm going to hide it. And you've got that layer. You've done some really great work. One with the rectangular selection and one with the oval selection and you also did a little bit of fuzzy select and a little bit of free select. So let's try another layer. So we're going to lock that and we'll hide those two layers. We're going to go back to our original and right click on that original layer and we're going to duplicate it again. Okay, and then use your arrows and let's bump that up to the top. Mine doesn't want to because I'm making a video and I used up all my RAM just bumping it up one layer. Ooh, it's not going to work. So if you ever have a situation where you can't get your layers to work like I am right now, you can do it under the layer menu. Layer, all things layer. And you can just go down to the stack and raise your layer. Or you can put that layer to the top, which is exactly what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that one. I'm going to call this one my free select. Okay, and we're going to do something with that. Make sure it's unlocked. Okay, it needs to be unlocked in order to be able to work in it. Here's a, just a little bit word of advice. If you're ever trying to do something and it's not working, go over to your layers. First of all, make sure that you have the layer that you're working in selected. Second of all, make sure it's not locked. Because if I have this layer selected and I'm really trying to do the work in this layer, then let's see. Let's say I'm trying to paint. Grab that paint tool. You do have other tools in here that you can play around with. I'm going to hit save really quick. I'm going to grab my paint tool. Whatever color is in this foreground box, that's what it's going to paint with. This is background, so you can switch those. So if you want to start using a white paintbrush, you can. You can also double click and you can change the color to whatever you want. Just sliding here and adjusting things here and the color that it's actually going to be, the current color right here, will show up there. You can also use the eyedropper tool when you click on that, it'll click the color Ooh, over there. There we go. See, it picked that bright yellow color. So that's the eyedropper tool. So you can match any color that you want on your canvas. Or you can even take palettes from the internet. If you go to Google and search palette, you can copy a palette and just paste the image of that palette here or off onto the side or on a different layer, and you can use um, your eyedropper tool to use the colors in that specific palette. That's pretty sweet. So what am I doing right here? What am I showing you? Oh, I was gonna show you how to paint, so I'll just go ahead and go with that. And I was demonstrating how if I really am doing the work in this layer, but I have this layer selected, watch what happens when I try to paint. I'm gonna hit save to make sure my RAM, hey, Hey, nothing's happening. Why isn't my paintbrush working? What's going on? Well, let's find out. Let's see. This layer was locked, so I know there's not going to be any paint on there because it's locked, but let's find out if it hadn't been locked. Let's see. So I'm, in, I'm, I'm really wanting to work on this layer, right? This is a layer that's on top, and that's why I can see it. Okay, so I'm going to click Save, free up my RAM. All right, I'm painting. Huh, can't get that stinking paintbrush to work. Hmm, have the right brush size? I got the right brush size. Why isn't anything happening? Let's see if anything happened in the actual layer that was selected. 
okay, this was one of those rare situations where I didn't have a paintbrush selected. <laughs> it had nothing selected. So if you're, if really, if yours isn't painting, go and make sure that you selected a paintbrush. I had this brush. I, I can't even believe that's even a thing. Um, so set your brush to something. <laughs> so this was a really bad example, right? Let's try this again. So let's pretend. <laughs> I'm gonna click save to forget my RAM. So let's pretend that I'm trying to paint on my layer and nothing is happening, right? Well, and I look over here and I go, oh, wait a minute, I have the ellipse layer selected. Oh, let's look at it. Oh, there's my paint. It's all over in the wrong layer. So then you hit Control Z to get rid of that. Well, I guess I have to hit Control Z again. And you can see in this little picture right here, okay, the paint disappeared. Let's check and make sure. All right, the paint is all gone out of there. I can lock that layer back up and I can make sure that I'm working in the correct layer. So always check to see if you have the right layer selected. Now I can paint. No problem. Painting all day long. Woohoo! How fun! All right, is that what we came here to do? No. Hit Control Z. <laughs> We came here to learn how to use the select tools. So what we're gonna do here <clears throat> is click save and we're going to go up to view, zoom, and fit the image in the window, okay? And I want to stop using my brush and I'm going to select this flower. Now the flower is yellow. It's the only yellow thing in the image. So which of these tools do you think would best select the flower? If you guessed fuzzy select, you're right, because fuzzy select is based on the color. So let's go ahead and click our fuzzy select tool. And I'm gonna up my threshold. I'm just gonna make it like 34, because I know that there's not really anything else in the picture that could get confused with yellow. It's the only yellow thing. And I'm going to click on it, and it selected everything that was that color, and it just didn't select any of the other, other ones. So to add these other colors to it, I hold down Shift, and I just keep clicking on those areas that didn't get selected until my whole flower looks good. What do you think? It's a pretty cool tool, isn't it? So if you're working with this um, type of color contrast, it's an easy way to select something in your picture. And a really good example of this is when you want one thing in your picture to be color and everything else in your picture to be black and white. So let's do that right now. I'm going to intensify the color of this first. So I'm going up to save, <laughs> colors, and let's go to brightness and contrast. And let's really make that, oh, you know what? Let's cancel that. Let's do hue and saturation first. So saturation, remember, that's gonna make the flower color more intense. So first I'm gonna intensify that as much as I can. And it just is not wanting to get any more intense, is it? <laughs> that's as intense as I can get it? All right, well, that's kind of a bummer. What about if I decrease the lightness? No, that just makes it black and white. All right, so we'll just cancel that because that didn't do what I wanted. And we will, after all, do brightness and contrast. And we're just gonna increase some contrast Yeah, we might not be able to get much of the effect that I was hoping for. Which is kind of disappointing. But what can I do? What can I do? Just play around with it as much as you can. So there's a preview window here. If you hit the preview window, you can see what it looked like before. And I think that's definitely an improvement. You can see a lot more of the details in the flower. So I'm going to click OK. Save. All right, here's your quiz. I want to make it so that everything else in this picture is selected because I'm gonna have everything in my picture black and white except for my flower. What do I do? Select, invert. Now you can see the marching ants are marching around everything else in the picture except the flower. 
You can tell that because the marching ants are going around the outside of the picture and around the outside of the flower indicating all of this is selected. So quiz, how do we change that to black and white? Let's go to colors, saturation, right? Saturation, we're going to decrease. Saturation. You can even do more of a sapia tone. This is how you get your sapia. Don't take it all the way down. Just a nice little sapia here, right? And I think if, if you do the sapia, then you can adjust that hue and you can make your sapia, get your sapia tone there. You can give it a different hue. So however you want it to look, but I'm just gonna take it all the way down to black and white. Just showing you different options so that if you're ever wanting to take your own photography, you know how to play around with it and get some of those really cool effects that you've been seeing. That's what this class is all about, so awesome. All right, so you're just gonna go ahead and click OK, and then we're going to do Select, None, okay? And I want, to click save, of course. I want to adjust one last thing. What's the last thing you always adjust in your pictures? Brightness and contrast. So let's go ahead and adjust that and pop up some contrast there. Beef that up. That looks good. Look at the way our little guinea pig popped. Yeah, would you get those nice pure blacks? That's nice. Now, I like that. It's all preference, though. You know, it's, it's whatever you feel like that looks good. So don't feel like you have to do it my way. You, whatever your artist eye tells you, what you connect with spiritually, do it. All right, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna lock that layer. And you know what? I'm gonna change the name of that because it, it, it changed. This ended up being my fuzzy select and my black and white, B and W, black and white. All right, so yeah, you might start off doing something and name your layer and think it's gonna be that, but then when you get done, you realize you know what, that's not what that was at all. So make sure that you rename your layers if that ever happens to you so that when someone like me goes in to see your work, I'm not like, wait a minute, that doesn't, that's not what that is. Um, and let's just check and look at what all the layers we've done look like for so far. Let's just look at and admire our artwork. So we've got, er, nothing there. Oh, oh. And look where we started. Isn't it cool what we can do with this program? All right, so click on the original, right click. And once again, we're going to duplicate that layer and I wanna move that layer to the top. If you can use your arrows to get it up there, go for it. I already know since I'm making a recording, I'm gonna have some RAM issues and it won't let me. And I'm just gonna come over here to the stack and layer it to the top. There, now it's at the top. Okay, this one's gonna be my Free select, <laughs> free select, name it, hit enter. We'll, we'll see how it actually turns out, right? So then um, make sure that it's not locked. Make sure that you're working in that layer. And the reason why we're doing a free select now is because we're actually gonna select our guinea pig. And I wanna show you what happens when we try to use the funny, fuzzy select tool on the guinea pig. I have to hit save, um, is it's gonna, and I'm, I can even increase the threshold. It's 34, that's a pretty high threshold. I can hold down shift and keep trying to select and notice what's happening. It's, yeah, it's not working. Why? Because this guinea pig is black and white, little tiny black and white stripes. And what does the free select tool do? It does like, solid color schemes, right? So that's not the tool to use when you're trying to select something that's got all of this black and white texture. So we're gonna hit Control Z and bring it back to where we were, or we can, I'm just hitting Control Z over and over again, or I can just go select none. That would be the easiest, right? All right, I'm gonna hit save, free up my RAM. And so instead, we're going to use this free select tool. So you're gonna grab the free select tool and you're just gonna essentially press your mouse key down and don't release it, hold it down, and then you're just gonna drag 
your mouse around and you know just keep your finger down don't release it don't release your finger just keep drawing and it doesn't have to be perfect I'm going to show you how to fix it in a minute just draw around it I mean you know get as good as you can but if it's not perfect don't release your finger just keep your finger down I said don't worry about this flower over here we'll be able to fix that you can go right into the flower actually it'd probably be best go right into that yellow because I'm going to teach you how to get rid of the yellow and that's going to be super easy and then when you get to the beginning you got to have that yellow dot there and now release okay so you've got this selection going around your guinea pig okay save free up your ram save your work <laughs> I'm gonna use this zoom tool okay and I'm gonna zoom in first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this yellow flower okay all right and how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use my 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 magic wand or my fuzzy select tool I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna grab that fuzzy select tool. And am I adding or subtracting the yellow from my selection of the guinea pig? I'm subtracting it, right? I wanna take it away. So what do I hold down? Do I hold shift or control to subtract? I hold down control to subtract. So I'm gonna click control and I'm going to just click, look it. Woohoo, that is so cool totally fixed the outer edge of my selection of my guinea pig isn't that awesome although I do see this little edge right here that didn't work out so well so I'm gonna grab I'm gonna save <laughs> I'm gonna grab my free select tool and I want to add that little piece back in so I'm gonna hold down shift and remember when you're doing this you always have to draw circles around stuff so I'm gonna start over here and I'm just going to draw a little circle around that area that I want to add back in. And boom, now it's back in there. Okay, and I'm going to add a little bit more of this foot here. Draw a circle around it. I'm going to add the toenail. Draw a circle around it. I'm holding down shift, right? Holding shift the entire time. I have not lifted my finger off of shift. Okay. And um, maybe here I want some better details, so I'm gonna do a little bit of subtracting. I'm gonna hold down control, and I'm just gonna subtract some of this stuff that's up here. So just kind of jogging my way around to subtract things that shouldn't be in there and then make my circle complete. Cool. All right, I wanna add this little tuft of hair, so I'm gonna hold down Shift, and I'm gonna add that, draw a circle around it, find my starting point, there we go. There's some tufts down here that didn't make it in. They need to be in there. Draw a circle around it. It's not even a real circle, but you know, just complete the circle. Uh, there's a little piece over here I don't want. I'm gonna control, subtract that little piece. There's a little bit in here, control. Draw a circle, subtract that. I want to get the tip of that nail better, so I'm gonna make that tip happen. There's a little bit more of a tip here. So the, the more precise you are with your selections, the more realistic your work is going to look. So I do highly recommend that you get in there and take the time to um, add and subtract things and make it look very precise. You will love it when you see how awesome it looks in the end. Okay, all right, so just a little bit more here. Okay, and it, it doesn't have to be totally perfect. I promise. But any of those little details that you can get in there, they do make a difference. So go for it. All right, hopefully while I'm doing this, you're doing it too. And your guinea pig is starting to be completely selected because I'm almost done getting to the top. I'm almost there myself. Hopefully you're working along with me. Okay. 
those little spikes at the top of his head, you know, those are going to be playing out real nicely in your design. Get rid of anything that shouldn't be there. You can do this. It just takes practice. I know it takes a while to get used to it. The more you do it, the easier it gets does start to become a little more intuitive with time and practice. But I know it's super awkward at first. That's what you're here to do, right? You're here to learn. I'm totally messing that part up. <laughs> Remember, you can always do control Z anytime to undo something if it didn't work out the way you wanted it to. Hey, that's a student contacting me now, probably wondering where this video is that I'm making right now for you. Because I love you. And I want you to pass my class. And I want you to pass all your classes. It's a very good kid. You deserve the best out of your life. And going to school is going to be your vehicle to success. Believe me. Okay, so once you get that the way that you like it, you can zoom back out, hit save, grab your magnifying glass, hold down control, and it'll zoom you back out. Okay, and now I want you to colorize. Let's give some color to this little black and white guinea pig. So we're going to colors, colorize. Awesome, look at that, how fun. Change that little guinea pig to whatever hue you want him to be. He is a cutie pie, he deserves a cute little hue, doesn't he? We could make him the UTVA guinea pig, make him purple, and then you can increase your saturation, make that color more intense. How fun, I love it. Yeah, you can adjust your lightness. Later on, we'll adjust the contrast. Click OK, File, Save. Nice. Let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, let's do the contrast, the brightness and the contrast right now. Adjust that contrast on that little guy. So cute. I have to adjust the brightness some more as you do that. All right, I love it. Cute little guy. I'm gonna click OK, that's how I like it. And then let's do our flower. Wait, let's invert the selection. So select, invert. Okay, so now everything out here is inverted except for the guinea pig. Okay, and let's go ahead and subtract the flower from that selection. So to do that, remember you're just gonna grab your fuzzy select tool, hold down control, and let's get rid of that flower, okay? And there's this little spot in here where we've got selection, so we're just going to save and grab a hold of that free select tool, hold down control and just draw a circle around all those little fuzzies in the middle. Just get rid of them like that. Okay, so now we have the whole entire background selected. Let's colorize the background. What color do you want the background to be? You know what? I want the background to be black and white. Okay, and I'm going to increase the, decrease the light. Okay, I'm going with the black and white background because I'm making my UTVA bunny. And I'm gonna click OK. And then I'm gonna go up to colors. Oh, it's not a bunny, it's guinea pig, sorry. UTVA guinea pig, <laughs> my guinea pig mascot. And I'm going to brightness and contrast because I want to make that background intense. Yeah, you like that? I like that, I'm gonna click okay. 
Okay, so what about this flower? If we're doing UTBA, the purple and gray, what color should we make the flower? I have an idea. Let's select it. So let's go select none. And let's use our fuzzy select tool. We've done this a million times now. And let's select the flower by holding down shift, getting all those areas. And now I'm gonna show you something fun, okay? <sighs> okay, so I think what we'll do is for this selection, I'm gonna show you how to use a paintbrush. So grab your paintbrush, make sure that you have a brush selected and we're gonna paint it a, a color. So let's go ahead and pick a color, whatever you want. So maybe you wanna do a purple color for UTVA. I'm gonna go ahead and select that purple and go okay. And I want a little bit of the flower to show through maybe, let's just see. We've got opacity set at 100%, so just go ahead and paint. And the cool thing is, is you'll notice that all it's painting is the area that I have selected, okay? So pretty fun feature there. You can make a selection and just paint it. Now let's say I don't want that paint to be full opacity. I wanna be able to see through it a little bit. So I'm gonna come over here and decrease the opacity of my paint. And you'll notice, well, it should have anyway. <laughs> It should have made it so that I could see some of the flower underneath. So I'm not quite sure why that's not working for me. Bizarro. Hmm. Well, my apologies that that demonstration didn't work, but normally if you would decrease the opacity, you'd be able to like see what had originally been underneath your paint. Um, let me try clicking save and see if that, no, that didn't help. Maybe you're having good results on your end, maybe you're not either, but do know that that should be something that would work for you. And I, maybe it's because of the type of brush that I have. Let's try using like a, a softer brush and let's hit control Z and let's try Oh, look at now what I paint. Oh, it won't do it retroactively. Okay, that's the problem. Change your opacity. And now when you paint, you can see that the opacity is really thin. But I thought I'd be able to just increase it, but apparently not. Okay, so that's a limitation of this program, which is fine. But such is life. Okay, so we could also um, make that flower white. I'm gonna hit Control Z and undo the paint job I did there. Maybe I just want some more white for my UTVA colors. But maybe I don't want it that white. Let's decrease the opacity. I wanna see what's underneath it Mama? still. Mama. Um, paint over it again. Paint over it again. You can do multiple paint layers there. And I'm gonna try to adjust the brightness and contrast. And you don't have to be doing exactly what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just playing around with it, seeing what kind of effects I can get. So I'm not totally crazy about this, but um, maybe an application. Oops, I canceled that. <laughs> maybe an application would be that I, I'm just gonna go ahead and increase my opacity and paint it white. I decided to put some text right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep that. I'm gonna save it. And I'm going to use the text tool now. Hey, what the heck, let's all do this together. So make your flower white. And then grab your text tool. And you're just gonna go like this. And just drag the box and then just start typing. So we'll go UTVA. And we can't see it because uh, this foreground color is white. We probably should have changed it to black first, but you can select it. And I'm gonna flip that and make it purple. And I'm gonna change the size of it just by increasing. I'm gonna fill that whole flower. Oops. I don't know if this is gonna work. 
because my, my RAM is going crazy. And when I'm done, I'm just going to click outside of it and see how it looks. And it, it does not want to take the color. <laughs> oh, brother. So let's just, if that happens to you, there are little quirks that happen with this program. Believe me, just hit Control Z and get out of there. And you know what I'm going to do? I am going to... I've got that color changed. You know what? I'm going to put my text in a new layer. Let's see. It, it automatically makes a new layer when you do text, though, I think, right? So grab your text tool, hit save so you have a RAM, draw your text box. You've already got your purple color selected. Type UTVA. Uh, there we go. So if you have any issues, just start over. Sometimes you're going to have problems with, with GIMP. It's not like perfect and you have to work with its quirks. Just like I have to work with your quirks and you have to work with mine. Okay, so then select outside of it. You'll notice that your text is on its own layer. It automatically does it for you. And you've got that little marching ants around it because the text layer is selected. Just select a different layer. And let's go select none. And boom, there's our UTVA logo. That's awesome. Okay, so I love that. We're just going to go ahead and um, let's uh, go free select UTVA logo. Awesome. I'm loving this class. This is so much fun, you guys. All right, so if we hide the text, notice it goes away. I'm going to go ahead and just, I want to go back and see what we've done. I just start at the bottom. There we go. Look at how much you've accomplished today. It's amazing. Okay, I'm going to lock those layers, I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to teach you how to do one more thing on the internet, and um, we're going to find a, a scene, and I found this cool skyscraper view where it's kind of looking down. We're going to find something to put our hamster in front of just to make it have a different background, give it more of a surrealism kind of view. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to copy this image. I'm going to go back to my GIMP and I'm going to go edit, paste as, and you want to click new layer. Okay. And so now I've got that picture of the skyscraper there and I want to get it the size of the canvas. So I'm going over here. This is your scale tool and it's a really wonky tool. Make sure you're in the right layer. And you're going to click on whatever it is that you want to scale. So I just clicked on the image and this box comes up and you can manually scale it to however you want or you can move it out of the way and just grab the corner. And I'm scaling that to the size of my canvas and when you're done moving it however you want it, click scale and it will be the right size. Okay, so find a cool image and you're just once again edit paste as new layer okay and then you can name that layer and you're going to name it your background okay and hit enter and then you've got to create a new layer so we're gonna oh actually you know what we're gonna do we are going to go down to our original again Woohoo! back to this little guy he's so cute and um we are going to right click and duplicate them. We've done that several times now. You know how to duplicate layers. Okay, and we want to move them all the way up to the top. So I'm going over to layer, stack, and layer to top. Now he is on top of that background. And what we're going to do, guys, this is really cool, is we're going to create a mask and we're going to delete all of this background and we're going to have our cute little guinea pig floating on top of the scene of the city. So it's really easy to make a mask. You just right click on the layer. Oops, but you've got to unlock it. Right click on the layer and add layer mask. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and do a white full opacity mask and go add. And I want you to notice there's two little boxes here. So toggle back and forth and see what happens. You get a little white box around each of them. So if you want to go into the white box, um, around your actual image. That's where we're going to be doing our work. Okay, so we're going to just quickly select our guinea pig and our flower again like we did before. 
I'm gonna click Save to free my RAM, and I'm gonna grab Free Select, and I'm just gonna go ahead and go around my guinea pig. So remember, you just hold your mouse down, and we're not gonna get too crazy this time, because we already did that. I just wanna show you how to use a mask, and then you can use masks in the future. All right, so going around, selecting this little guy, go all the way around the flower, because we're gonna select the flower too. Okay, and then you're going to use your fuzzy select tool and hold down shift and just click on your flower like you did before and select the rest of your flower. Okay, and then if you have any blaring issues with your guinea pig, you can just go back to free select and use your shift to add some areas that you might have missed. Okay, and control to subtract any areas that you didn't want to have in there. Okay, so once you get him looking pretty good, it doesn't have to be totally precise. Whoops, use the wrong. Okay, that doesn't look good either. <laughs> once you get him looking pretty good, okay, then we're going to invert the selection. Okay, so select invert because I'm going to erase this whole background here. Okay. But now we don't want to be working in the image. We want to be working in our mask. Okay. So click on, make sure the white box is around the mask, which you can't tell because the mask was already white. And how a mask works is that whatever's white on the mask is going to show this picture and whatever's black is going to erase it pretty much. So I know that probably doesn't make sense, which is why in the email I have provided you with another video that goes into more detail about what masks are. So watch that video, okay? And um, you're gonna click your paintbrush after you save. <laughs> make sure that it's black. Make sure that you have a nice solid brush. And I'm gonna increase the size of my brush a little bit so that I can just, okay? And you're not seeing anything happening, you know why? because we don't have our background visible. All right, make sure your background layer that you just pasted in there is visible, and now watch what's happening. Ah, look, this little guinea pig. Ha, <laughs> ha, how cute. Oh my gosh, he's like, oh no, he's falling down, right? All right, so funny, oh, that poor dude. And can I go in and get a little more precise? I can hit um, select none. And I can just take my brush and zoom in a little bit. And I can get a little more precise. I'm gonna hit save, grab my brush. I'm gonna decrease, I'm gonna change my brush, hopefully. <laughs> you can change it here or you can go over here too. This will let you change your brush. I'm gonna make it so that my brush is a little softer and I want it to be a lot smaller. And I'm gonna come over here, a lot smaller, I said. <laughs> I have to just go like this, okay? And I'm gonna just get a little bit closer to his hair so that it looks a little more realistic. Pretty cool. And I can just work my way around this little dude. Oh. Control Z. I'm going to come down here to his little feetsies and just softening the edges a little bit. Not necessarily erasing, just kind of using that brush to soften things up around the edges. Looks pretty good. Yeah, this makes a difference when you don't have like those kind of stark contrasty edges. So cute. Who doesn't love a good little guinea pig? Okay. You can also use this little smudge tool right here. I'm going to click File, Save. Um, if you ever have edges that are really rough and you can just kind of smudge them a little bit, that helps too. Make it a little more softer. 
you know how you get that really contrasted edge and then it doesn't look realistic anymore so you can do that especially here around this flower it's going to be nice to kind of smooth that out a little bit notice you've got um, your tool you can just click on some edges and it'll smooth them just a touch They're just not quite so rough just clicking on them Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back. File, save, free up my RAM. Control, zoom back. Or I can go view, zoom, fit image and window. And there it is. Oh, I'm not liking that right there. That doesn't look good. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab my smudge tool and I'm gonna smudge here. Cause I'm not liking how that, it's just too contrasted. You know what I mean? He just it just looks unrealistic down here by his belly. So I'm smudging that out, give, giving it a softer look. Okay, our poor little hamster's getting dropped. Um, let's make sure that we're working on our hamster picture right now. And I'm going to tools, I'm going to uh, colors, sorry, colors, <laughs> brightness and contrast. I wanna increase the contrast on him a little bit and make him pop some. Yeah, and maybe I want to do that to the background. Select your background layer. Click OK on that first one. Select your background. Go to brightness and contrast. Increase your contrast on that so that your contrast on your guinea pig and your picture match. And go OK. Aww. There he goes. You know what else you could do? That would be really cute. Go back and work in your picture here. Let's grab this fuzzy select tool and let's hold that down and hold shift. Get that flower flower selected real quick. This is gonna be the ultimate. This is the ultimate, you guys. I'm telling you. Increase your threshold if it's giving you a hard time. Just one second, please. Okay, you've got that. We're gonna go ahead and hit Control C, copy. Look at what's down here. Look, it's in your clipboard, and we're gonna go Control V, and it's pasted as a floating selection right now. Grab your move tool. I gotta hit save because my move tool is not working. And grab that and move it. Uh oh, we gotta. It's gotta be its own layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, to a new layer. I'm gonna paste it. That way we can see it. And let's rescale it. So let's size this one down. So click on scale, save to free up your RAM. Okay, let's click on it. Let's scale it down. All right. And then the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate it around a little bit. So how do we rotate it? Mm, here we go, rotate, click on it, move this box out of the way. And you can use this slider to rotate it around. So I'm gonna rotate that and click okay. And then I have to use my move tool, move tool. And I'm gonna have some of these little flowers falling down too so that it looks like he's, these are all falling. So control copy, Control V, I'm gonna right click on that. Okay, and that's pasted to a new layer. And let's grab the move tool and let's move it. And where else could that one be? That one could be falling down a little bit lower and I'm going to rotate it. Gotta click save to free up that RAM. Rotate it around, click on it. Use that little dragger right there. How do I, what direction? How about that one? Click rotate. And we're gonna scale it down too. So click on it. Just a second, Abby. I'll be right with you. Scale it down. Okay, so we're gonna give the illusion and then move tool. We're gonna give the illusion that these flowers are falling underneath him. And I'm gonna move this flower down below. So I'm gonna grab that flower and I'm gonna go layer, stack, lower layer. And you could use these ones right here, but I know that I've got too much RAM and it's not gonna let me, I'm gonna lower it. And that way it's showing that it's behind the guinea pig and I can move it and go, hmm, where does it look the best falling underneath him? And this one too, I could move this one so it's underneath. So I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna see if it'll let me move it down. No, <laughs> layer, stack lower layer I'm gonna move that one down and let's move it over so it's kind of behind him so it looks like 
he is falling down with this flower all right and then um, click on your background layer so that you don't have any weird funny selections and there he is dude your guinea pig is falling ah! oh man that is the ultimate so ladies and gentlemen congratulations if you just did this video you've completed your image design class you need to have all these layers you're gonna press save make sure as your first and last name and now we're just going to leave it like that um, I'm gonna have you guys what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you just have these layers visible so all you can see is this and I want everything else locked and hidden okay and I'm gonna have you go file export as okay and you're going to put make sure it has your first and last name already and make sure it's in your image design folder and you're just going to change the PNG to dot JPG change the dot PNG to dot JPG just type it in so we're making a JPEG and you're going to click export increase this to 100 percent click export all right and you're going to submit that JPEG of this little dude falling and you're going to submit this GIMP file. I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to go into my image design folder and go into my intervention folder and where is it? So here it is. There is my JPEG I just exported that you made. You're going to submit that to your, um, you can just submit it to the Project One Dropbox. And then you, here is your GIMP file that you made with Project One. You're going to submit both of those files to me to the Dropbox with all these layers and this fun picture right here. And you'll be done. <laughs>